Hello. Oh, how are you? Ah, you're up there. Hello. Nice to see you. So. There you go. Ramon. Ramon. Ramon, Ramon. Uh, hi, it's Craig here, and I'm just doing a little bit of a follow-up video to the video I made uh, on my trek to see Paul McCartney. Um, I, I, I'm a little bit overwhelmed because I set up my outdoor channel a little while ago to start putting up uh, my camping, you know, my walks that I was doing my to help me lose weight, and uh, my camping, and I really, really love doing these videos and the McCartney video um, just grew arms and legs and I will always have that trip out there in my head because I loved it and it was part of a bigger thing that happened that day which was driving across across the beautiful countryside of of Kintyre all the way up to uh, Glen Etive or Etive uh, up in Glencoe where I filmed a, a video about the location where uh, the film James Bond's um, uh, gold, uh, Skyfall, not Goldeneye, Skyfall. Um, anyway, I wanted to thank everybody who has commented and subscribed to the channel. It is amazing. And I see YouTubers say things like this and they're like, I'm so humbled. And I was like, I've been a bit cynical about them doing that. But it is overwhelming to get that amount of uh, appreciation from people. It's so weird and nice to get it and so I wanted to do a video to thank you uh I don't know who you are but uh, I know you're out there and uh I hope that you stick around and if you're uh here because you're a Beatles fan then welcome I'm going to do more Beatles stuff I'm going to go to where they filmed uh parts of Magical Mystery Tour uh I may do Liverpool uh though I'd like to stick to countryside places really or seaside places and um I'll see what else I can come up with that's sort of Beatles related. But I'm, I do have, um, just to explain, two YouTube channels. There's this one, which is my outdoors channel. Uh, I also have a channel called Flooded, uh, Flooded uh, YouTube.com forward slash Flooded, F-L-U-D-D-E-D. -E <laughs> and on there is uh, My Other Life, which um, I'm a professional, believe it or not, TV producer director and uh, I'm a self-shooting producer director so that means I run around uh, with my camera making terrible television programs that you lot uh, well if you're in Britain you lot watch actually some of you in America might watch um, so I have quite a lot of material out there <laughs> and I'm pretty sure you'll have seen some of my work um, so I do that uh, for a living although it does get very quiet uh, at certain times in the year uh, so I have to, um, you know, that gives me a lot of time to go walking. The response has been phenomenal. Uh, I'll read out a couple of the messages, but there's one in particular I want to flag, uh, people raising issues about privacy and should I have been doing that? Um, but, uh, let's just read a couple of things here. Um, uh, let's have a look, see what people have said here. I enjoyed your video. This is Cindy Charles. I enjoyed your video, Craig. It's great that you were able to hike so close. When I was in Campbelltown in 1978, I stayed at the hotel near the Mull of Kintyre. Uh, some of the McCartney entourage were there, including Denny Lane. I was able to speak with him for a moment. I didn't hike around the area and took great photos. I did hike around the area and took great photos of the Mull of Kintyre, but I was not close to Paul's actual farm, at least. I don't think that I was. It was beautiful countryside, though. I was hoping that I could have met the McCartney family, but I was very pleased with my experience. There you go. So um, I think uh, I, I've, um, I had a friend who used to work at Heathrow Tower, and he told me uh, that a VIP was coming in, uh, and it was a, there was a helicopter booked to fly a VIP from uh, Wembley Stadium to a nearby golf course in the north of London. So, uh, and he said, I'm not saying anything, but I think it's McCartney leaving his concert, Craig. And this was back in the, um, I don't know, uh, back in the Flowers in the Dirt period, that tour. 
so we all snuck. So me and him, because uh, he had privileged access, went to this golf club, and sure enough, a helicopter came and landed in uh, on the gr- on the fairways. Uh, and then this little entourage of people with towels over their heads came up to a, like a minibus van that was waiting for them. And we were behind a fence. And it was McCartney, Linda, uh, and the band, uh, Robbie McIntosh. Uh, and the drummer, Chris Witten, was there. And they they didn't come over uh, because they were straight off the stage. They're all sweating and they wanted to get into the warmth. But because um, you can catch your death, you know. But they stopped and they waved and they said hi and they said, "How did you know?" and stuff like that. And McCartney, it was it was it was fun. Uh, my other other McCartney, well, I've got two, three mother McCartney experiences. Uh, was I um, was wandering through Soho Square where MPL Communications have an office or used to have an office? I don't know if it's still there. And McCartney came out of his office with Chris Witt and the drummer. Uh, and a lot, a couple of people were asking for his autograph. And I had a cassette single of My Brave Face in my pocket. So I went up to him and asked him to sign it. And he put to Craig uh, Paul McCartney. And uh, he was very chatty. And I was, it's so awkward, you don't know what to say, do you? And I got Chris Witten to sign it as well. I, rude not to, I thought. Uh, my next experience was as a tape hop at Air Studios. Where it was a few years later, quite a few years later, and McCartney came in and uh, he was recording various bits and bobs, um, and that's it. The studio I worked at was Air Studios, which was um, the chairman of it was George Martin, who was the Beatles producer, obviously, and Giles Martin, his son, was uh, not really interested in uh, recording studios when I knew him. Uh, but he was a really nice guy, and uh, he, you know, we used to go out drinking. He was a bit of a lad, to be honest, and we did party at, at his house, which was his dad's house. So I've partied at George Martin's house, and um, another day we had. Uh, oh, by the way, George, I, I had a session with George Martin he, he, as a tape hop. He was it was the CD release of the Red and Blue compilation albums. And he was listening to dats of the of the uh, mixes, and he was like trying to decide whether to put a different mix on one of the albums. And <laughs> he was asking me what I thought. He said, "What do you think? Is that a stereo mono version?" Which you? I said, "Stereo." <laughs> well, okay. He was also he's slightly deaf at that stage, but I don't know. I don't even know what the song was. I was like, "Ah, you, George Martin," and um. He he did sessions with Jose Carrera. He was coming in all the time, and as a tape hop, you're you're some you can you, you can be sort of sat at the back, but quite often you're sort of required to not be there until you're called, so you have to wait outside or whatever. But uh, uh, yeah, so he was around a lot, and that was a massive buzz and a massive inspiration to see him there. Uh, but more than anything, I became buddies with his son. Uh, not massive, just like kind of like oh, you know, down the pub type thing at the end of the day with all the other engineers. Um, and the other one was George Harrison came in uh, to do a song, a track called Devil Under Deep Blue Sea, which he recorded with Joe Brown. He was also there. I've got loads of little pop star stories I can tell you. A brilliant Mark Knopfler story. Uh, I've played the national guitar from the cover of Brothers in Arms. Anyway, I'm wobbling. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a bit, I'm a bit excited. But I'm bringing back all my memories. Anyway, my wa- <laughs> back to McCartney and walking through the countryside. I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, people saying, um, well, somebody's actually, somebody called GEHBW has posted here. Um, this is the best picture quality I've seen on a YouTube video. <laughs> Gee, thank you. Uh, someone will need to explain the trespassing laws in Scotland to me sometime. I'm going to do that right now. Uh, but not but the abridged version. Uh, I've compiled some coordinates to know exactly where this was. Paste these into Google and I look at a, a satellite image. Well, that's a bit that. I know some people said what I did was a bit creepy, and you know you shouldn't be um, stalking people's houses like that. I did say in the video that uh, based on what locals had told me, and when I say locals, I mean the owner of a near the, the only hotel in that part of the. The, the, that peninsula told me that McCartney's hadn't been uh, on, you know, around for, for at least five years. He would know about it because he was like, he was like a main community hub for everybody. And he says, no, there's no McCartney's not here. Um, I told him about the farm and asked him if uh, we were allowed to walk to it. He says, oh, people do it all the time. Uh, hill walkers, uh, you can go wherever you want. Um, which I did check out. I checked it out before I went. 
And they have free roaming laws in Scotland, which are slightly different to to England. But um, you know, it's very it's a very sort of um, it's a, it, it's a very laid back uh, place. The, you know, uh, the the government in Scotland tend to be very pro you uh, looking at their beautiful place. So you can pretty much go wherever you want. It's different slightly in England because we have pathways that you you have to stick to the path. Uh, if because you, you are literally sometimes walking around somebody's private land, you can't go walking over crops. Sometimes you have to walk through crops, but there's a path there, and and the farmers have to let you have to enable you to do that. So they have to look after the pathways and make sure that the public are have good access. I've walked through farms before, you know, while, while the guy was milking cows, you know, and they're quite happy with you, you know, trekkers walking through or um, ramblers as they're called here in the UK. <laughs> well, I guess they call that everywhere, aren't they? But um, so the laws are that it's okay. What I did was absolutely fine. Now, the other issue is, well, what about somebody's privacy? Well, as I said, nobody was there, and I knew that. Um, I wouldn't ever clamber over a fence unless there was structure there designed to enable me to do that. Uh, if a gate is unlocked, I might, as I did in the video, I might go through it. Uh, and make sure I lock it behind because that's very often what you have anywhere. You just have a gate and it's it's open to the. They don't lock it because it's open to the public. Um, uh, the the law stipulates uh, that you you are free to go wherever you like. Um, I think there are, for me, sort of moral limits to that. I wouldn't go right up to somebody's property even if they weren't there. I'd start looking through windows. You know, I just wouldn't do that. And I didn't do that. And I don't really particularly like the idea of these, somebody's, I'm going to leave them there, but somebody has left a comment where they've put all the coordinates uh, to to the location in, which I think is a lot of work. And there's so much work went into it. I'm not going to take it down. But, you know, if you do go there, I mean, obviously we're all going to be very respectful, aren't we? Of If, if, if I went there and there was like hundreds of people doing it, I would, well, probably I'd feel a lot better about doing it myself. But, um yeah, I just think just be respectful to people. And if somebody's even hints that they're not happy with you being there, just say you're really sorry and, and go away. Um, and that's all I wanted to say about it, apart from the fact that I went from having, uh, I think, 110 subscribers to now 500. So I'm super delighted about that. When I get to 1,000, I can monetize the site. I might get a bit of ad revenue. That video has got 41.2 thousand views and most people are watching the whole thing. So that's fantastic for me. I'm super pleased with it. I love my outdoors channel. Um, I do have my Floody channel, which is a television production and film production. That's over at youtube.com forward slash flooded, F-L-U-D-D-E-D. Um, but that's a different vibe. That's what this is all for. That's what this this setup here is all for. So um, by all means, if you're interested in, in, in following what I do, then go and join me over there. Over there, I've got a new series called Filming Locations Revisited. And I've only done two locations. One is the Skyfall location in Glencoe in Scotland. And the other one is uh, I did the Mull, where, where they shot the Mull of Kintyre video um, on the beach uh, a saddle beach uh, on the east coast of Kintyre. I went there straight after filming uh, that walk to the McCartney's farm. So you can go and catch that video. It's about the same length. They're quite long, my videos, um, which somebody else had commented on uh, about the uh, sticking around with the video to the very end. I'll come to that in a sec. But if you do want to go over there and watch that Mull of Kintyre video, it is over there. It's got me singing a terrible version of Mull of Kintyre. Uh, which uh, I'm very glad to say people have pointed out to me. In fact, let me read you some of the, the comments that I have got. Um, let's have a look here now. Uh, so uh, Mark Shaw said, uh, How creepy, a stalker with a channel. Please keep an eye on this weirdo. Ram was recorded in New York and LA, by the way. Uh, cheers, Mark. Um, I'm not a stalker. Uh, the police are aware that I'm a weirdo. No, they're not. Um, and you're right about Ram. I was wrong in the video. I have bad research. But uh, many other songs were recorded at the studio or done, sorry, at the farm. At least 
written at the farm, I think it's fair to say. So, um, but you're right, I don't believe Ram was recorded there. I'm, I did, I'm sure there was a recording studio in the farm, though, wasn't there? He did have a recording studio there. Although when he went there, he was pretty broke after the Beatles. So that was uh, one of the uh, more colourful um, comments that I got. Let's see if I can find another one for you. Uh, some of these just made me laugh, by the way. Let's see here now. It was a very, very good one I got, which uh, wanted to point out to me something about my stature, which is always helpful to know. Um, I got this really nice uh, from Sherry Leonard said, this is what she said. She said, love, love, love your videos. Keep up taking us along. Love to see the lighthouse in the darkness of, of the morning. That's one of my other videos. Oh, I'm reading you one that's not relevant to the McCartney. Here's one here from, uh, I'll just say his first name, James. Uh, he says, um, fat slob invades privacy to gop. Why not have a gop at wee cranky's house? Cheers for that, uh, James. Uh, he's absolutely right. That's exactly what does happen in the video. I have a good gop. Um, and I don't know who's cranky, who cranky is. Is that a reference to the crankies? If it is, uh, James, uh, crankies is spelled with a K, not a C. Yeah. Uh, Steve Jones said to me, I like your vids. You're just a nice down-to-earth guy. Ah, take that, James. I'm a, I'm a nice down-to-earth guy. Uh, would love to have a plate of bangers in mash with your laddie. Ah, take that, James. He'd like to have some bangers and mash with me. Hi from me, Vancouver, BC, Canada. Yeah, so there. All over the world, I'm loved. In fact, I'm joking, but it has been overwhelming. The comments have been just fantastic. And I really, 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 really appreciate it. Um... Oh, sorry, some of these comments are from my Mull of Kintyre video. Anyway, I, this has gone on too long. It's uh, 70 minutes. Listen, thank you so much for all the amazing positive feedback. Please do stick, stick with me on the channel. I've already, I've got, I've got a video I'm just about to cut of a camping trip I did at the base of Ben Nevis. Sounds a little more impressive than it was. Uh, and I'm going to be editing that very, very shortly. Uh, and I'm getting out and about. We've got some uh, coldish weather coming in. So I'm keen to get out there and get into the blustery uh, moors of Yorkshire. Um, I've got some more trips planned to go in Scotland and also a trip down. And uh, I'm going to go to Herges Ridge. I'm going to go to where they shot uh, some of the scenes from Magical Mystery Tour. Uh, I'm also got. Um, I'll see if I can find any other Beatles y related things. I, I I think I could probably go to the spot where they filmed um, uh, Shrubby Fields Forever that video because I know where that is. Um, so bear with more to come. Really appreciate your your support. Um, Till next time, goodbye and uh, thanks again. You are all absolutely amazing, and I do. I really really really. Really do appreciate it. If you hit the bell, by the way, you'll get a notification every time I upload a, a video. So make sure you hit that notification bell. Okay, cheerio.